Welcome to Expedition Pico, where we're going to take you on a journey to explore the Raspberry Pi Pico. In January 2021, the Raspberry Pi Foundation introduced a new microcontroller called the RP2040. To provide accessibility to it and to make it easy for us to use, they packaged it on a board with all the necessary components and they called it the Raspberry Pi Pico. This microcontroller board is very affordable at just $4. Can you imagine that? A microcontroller with all the necessary components to actually power it up, program it, and use it for $4. That's an amazing feat right there. And they didn't uh, skimp on features and capabilities. The Pico would be comparable to other microcontroller devices such as the microchip PIC and AVR microcontrollers, or if you go back a little further in time, it would be the Atmel AVR microcontrollers. Um, there's also the current and very popular Espressif uh, ESP32 microcontrollers. Very powerful, very popular today. And then uh, the coup de grace of all makers is the Arduino series. And they use a variety of different microcontrollers, so they're not really a manufacturer of a microcontroller, but they've put together a package supporting that, uh, or a wide variety of packages supporting that, and bundled it with a great programming interface or an IDE, and it's become very, very popular and has been for a very long time now. To give you further comparison to where the Pico fits into the market, let's take a quick look at it uh, against the Arduino Uno, which is an 8-bit system, has 16K of flash, runs at 8 megahertz, and retails for about $24 US. The Arduino Mega is an 8-bit microprocessor, a microcontroller, 256K of flash, 16 megahertz, and it sells for about $45. One of their very powerful systems called the Arduino Duo is a 32-bit microcontroller with 87K of flash running at 84 megahertz, and that's about $47. And again, I'm going back to the price because all of us are value conscious. Look at what the Raspberry Pi offers at just $4. 32 bits, dual core, 264K of flash RAM, 130 megahertz, and again, that whopping very low price of just $4. Let's take one more look across these comparisons so that we understand a little bit more about their differences. As you can see, this is the Raspberry Pi Pico next to its Arduino uh, that we're comparing against. And one of the things you'll notice right away is that they're much, much smaller. Now, of course, I don't have the header pins on them, but that doesn't make the board any bigger. On the Uno, um, you can see it's a very uh, large board by comparison, uses a very large USB connector. Um, the header pins uh, are on the sides, just as we've got here. Now, the Uno is comparable with the number of available pins for both digital, I.O., and analog. We get into the Mega Series, and in this particular board here that is uh, noted as Mega Compatible, it's not a true Arduino product, um, it has many more inputs and outputs, and they're not all broken out on this particular board, but it does have more I.O. capability. We get over to the Arduino Duo, again many more I.O. pins uh, than the Raspberry Pi Pico, but yet still much larger in size. And this would be originally using the Atmel uh, brand, which is now owned by Microchip of microcontrollers. So as you can see, I can't do a direct one-to-one -one comparison between the Arduino uh, microcontrollers and the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. 
Uh, keep in mind, microcontrollers are all packaged with different features, capabilities, number of I.O. pins, etc. So you have to take that into account when selecting your microcontroller. Just don't fall into the trap of uh, the brand name or the cost or the price or the size. You have to take into consideration all the features and, and most importantly in many cases, does it have enough pins to do what you need it to do. Now you might be thinking, for four dollars I really can't be getting that much value in a microcontroller board. Well, in truth you are getting a tremendous value in a microcontroller board. Let's go over some of the features uh, that I personally find very valuable in a microcontroller. It's easy to use with the MicroPython uh, programming language and the Thani programming environment, both of which are free. It has and offers 23 digital GPIO pins and three analog to digital converter pins. It's very fast, featuring two 32-bit cores and clocks up to 133 megahertz. Can be powered by micro USB or batteries very easily. It has 264K of SRAM plus 2 megabytes of flash RAM. For peripherals, uh, you'll find the very common ones. You get two SPI interfaces, two I2C interfaces, two UARTs, 16 PWM channels. For the power users that are out there, and you may need to use uh, some high-powered computing capability working with floating point math, there is floating point libraries on the chip, thus improving performance in floating point mathematics. Another very powerful feature of the Pico are state machines. There's eight of them on the Raspberry Pi Pico, four in each core. And those can do very powerful things such as output VGA video as one example. Very powerful system. Uh, overall the unit is very compact at just 21 millimeters wide and 51 millimeters tall or roughly in the inch world one inch by two inches in size. It runs on 3.3 volts. Uh, some people see that as a benefit, some see it as a detriment. I myself am finally getting used to working mostly in 3.3 volt these days. Let's face it, the 5 volt logic is going to fade away slowly but surely. As typical with any Raspberry Pi Foundation product, it's very well documented and there's plenty of documentation out there not only on programming it with MicroPython, but the data sheet for the whole Pico board, as well as the data sheet for the RP2040 microcontroller. And most importantly, not only is it just $4, has a tremendous amount of features, but it's a whole lot of fun to use and play with. One of the important considerations when selecting any microcontroller for any type of project is if there is any third-party support for accessories such as screens, uh, displays, uh, all kinds of sensors, uh, it, just the whole wide variety of things that we do with microcontrollers. Is there support? As luck would have it, very quickly the market adopted the Raspberry Pi Pico and welcomed it by creating and providing a wide number of accessories specifically designed around the Raspberry Pi Pico. For example, Adafruit has a number of boards and products they've designed for it, as has Spark Fun. One company is really standing out for providing accessories, and that is Pi Moroni. That company has really jumped on board and has come up with an awful lot of very nice accessories and devices for use specifically with the Raspberry Pi Pico. And of course, we'll be featuring many videos on all of these products from Adafruit, Spark Fun, Pi Moroni, and any others that uh, we feel are really of interest and use to you, our audience. Another thing that you must understand is that the Raspberry Pi Pico like the other microcontrollers and the Arduinos, these are not full-blown computers. 
And unfortunately these days, that's a real gray definition between a microcontroller and a full-blown computer or microprocessor. Um, I kind of just break it down like this. If the device is all set up for full capability and flexible functions such as a normal PC, a Linux computer, or a Mac computer where it's designed with a, a visual device, a display uh, port, keyboard, mouse, input devices as standard features, as well as the ability to, while running it, be able to load and run different programs. To me, that's more of the computer category. The microcontroller category is more specifically uh, designed around taking care of a very specific single problem or process. Uh, so you don't have the standard I.O. interface for a display, keyboard, and mouse like you would on a computer. Um, generally, they don't run, you don't select and run different programs on a microcontroller in its final function or purpose. So keep that in mind when considering this. There is no keyboard mouse interface, there is no display interface. You work with it through the Thani IDE program editor. Uh, that's very simple to use, very easy to use, and you connect to it with a basic micro USB cable such as this and do all your programming and of course you can print that and shows up print out data and that'll show up in your Thani editor. As you may already be familiar, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation has a number of single board computers, the Raspberry Pi Model 2, 3, 3B+, 4, 0, 0, W, a variety of, of single board computers. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico doesn't really compete with those products and don't try to compare them directly. It's just not a true or fair comparison either way. Which would lead to another question, why would I choose the Pico over a Raspberry Pi? Cost, plain and simple. If you don't need the keyboard mouse interface, you don't need a display, you're not going to run different programs on it while you're using it uh, like a normal computer, go with a microcontroller at $4. Even the cheapest uh, single board computers out of the Pi Foundation are twice or three times that amount uh, for the very cheapest. So don't go with the extra complexity if you don't need to. Another very strong deciding factor for me when using and selecting a microcontroller is power up and boot up time and OS concerns. With a microcontroller, you power it up, it runs. There is no operating system to load, there is no file system to get corrupt, etc. With all other computers, you have to power them on, it takes a while for them to boot up, then you can use it. If you shut it down or you lose power, you could corrupt the file system, etc. So if you don't need the added complexity of a computer, don't use it. Just stick with the Raspberry Pi Pico to do all the work for you. For me, I get into a lot of different types of projects, either in maker uh, spaces and doing things of this nature, or in uh, industrial type applications. So I have a little more broad uh, experience with microcontrollers and how I use them. Uh, but nonetheless, just some common things where you would see microcontrollers used in your life. Uh, you would use them anywhere additional control needs to be used in a circuit. For example, if you got a light switch in your home, probably don't need a microcontroller. You flip the switch, it provides power, and the light comes on. But your radio, your MP3 player, your car, your car probably has dozens of different microcontrollers in it handling anything from the windshield wipers to the heating system to uh, controlling the I.O. going in and out of your entertainment system. Uh, you could have microcontrollers in your toaster that you make your toast with, uh, TVs, appliances of all sorts, your washers, your dryers, your dishwasher, your oven. All these things utilize microcontrollers to make them more intelligent and more functional and useful for our lives. So that's where and when you would select a microcontroller 
over using a full-blown computer. Hopefully I've gotten you a little bit excited about trying and using the Raspberry Pi Pico. I don't work for the Raspberry Pi Foundation, but I do know and understand how to have fun. And I've had a lot of fun using the Pico over the last year. And that's probably why I decided also to uh, create this video series and to take everybody on this expedition with me as I go through and explore the many aspects of the Pico and the many devices that can be used with it as well as some cool projects along the way that I plan to make with it. On this expedition, I've already filmed 23 stories. I've got 57 in total planned uh, that will continue to come out at a rate of about one per week for obviously about a year uh, to achieve that 57 total videos. Now, of course, as new devices and, and uh, things come out that can be used with the Raspberry Pi Pico, Odds are really good. I'm going to continue to extend this series as long as there's support from viewers such as yourself. All that I really needed to do is subscribe, like, and watch whenever you can. Some of the topics will include uh, how to interface the Raspberry Pi Pico with a variety of devices. That'll be the bulk of these videos because that's generally what people need to, to learn about. How to get the Pico to work with a particular device, even if it's something as simple as a switch or a LED or as complex as an I squared C interfaced uh, temperature uh, sensor or a rotary encoder, all these different things. That's not to say we're not going to have videos covering uh, features of the Pico. For example, we'll be talking about uh, interrupts, timers, uh, PWM signals and how to generate them, working with I squared C, working with SPI interfaces, perhaps even UART interfacing, uh, and that sort of stuff. We also plan to go and do uh, presentations on accessory devices that you can purchase. I don't really want to go down the rabbit hole with this series of product reviews. Um, I will offer opinions on what I think of an object, but oftentimes if you do reviews, the audience tends to think I'm just being a pitch man for a product, and that takes away credibility of what I'm trying to convey and share with everybody. So keep that in mind. I will be featuring other products, and we'll be having in-depth discussions on those along the way. And finally, uh, as projects come up, uh, we'll be having uh, discussions on those, uh, however I go about presenting them. They might be very in-depth and detailed, some might be very fun and simple. Now, also, adding to the great value of a free YouTube subscription, uh, each of the projects or videos that we present that will contain source code, fritzing wiring diagrams, or STL files for something you need to 3D print, all that data will be easily downloadable from our companion website and we'll put links in each of the videos. Furthermore, oftentimes I'll be referencing certain devices that you may have to purchase. I'll try to simplify that for you by providing links to the suppliers or typically like Amazon and so forth where you can buy just about anything from anywhere. So I really hope you join me on this expedition as I explore all things Raspberry Pi Pico. To do so, please subscribe and click the notification bell because that'll get you notified anytime a new video comes out. I look forward to seeing you in the rest of the videos in this series.